property is consumed by the person who consumes of it. And in just that little time, we've eliminated uh, every possible injustice of, of the system. Of course, I can say that because I've, I've, I've gone through this cycle so many times, so many ways, uh, before so many audiences who've raised every question over and over again um, uh, that, in fact, we have already answered for if, 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 if anyone is listening carefully to this explanation. Um, so this little alone uh, represents the nature of a, of a promissory obligation and, in effect, a perfect economy is merely a system of accounting which um, says, okay, um, so-and-so built this house over here and so-and-so over here wants to possess that house. They commit to paying for it as they consume of it. And um, uh, we issue evidence of this obligation to the producer of the house who therefore, being as this is the token, is, is our instrument of tokenization, um, is therefore paid in full in what it becomes a spendable currency, which is just in respect to every case, every instance, and every conduit possible. Um, and, 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 and so such an economy is, is not just an eradication of inflation, deflation, maldisposition, systemic manipulation of the cost or value of money or property, and inherent multiplication of artificial in indebtedness for the whole purported economy. It is, it is that even for every case and every affected individual. So um, I still see it as uh, uh, the, 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 that this would be the, the natural um, evolution of, uh, of relations between individuals as I give in my parable of perfect economy, um, whereas we have you know, two agricultural producers who issue promissory obligations to each other, and these are traded about the community, and of course, because they represent an obligation to pay and we have integrity, um, they're collectible and they serve as genuine, um, enforceable uh, instruments of, of, of value and, and, and tokenizations of, of value. Um, whereas uh, what, what a banking system would do, it, it comes in and, 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 it, and, it, and it gives up no... Uh, uh, you know, lawful consideration and merely publishes the evidence of our promissory obligations to each other um, and then collects the principal and then multiplies that um, into terminal artificial indebtedness by interest, um, the ostensible risk of which is the principal, which they never gave up. In fact, uh, the, the purported banking system uh, only risks uh, the mere negligible costs of publishing the e evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. So the whole thing is a lie when this this third third party comes into it. And and so we go back to connect the dots that you first mentioned here. Uh, the you know the banking system never arose out of some beneficent character who was trying to do well for the world. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, who began this so-called Bank of England, um, was perhaps the most notorious and ruthless embezzler of all history. You know, this is where his beginnings come from. And that's what kind of person uh, started uh, this thing we call banking, which is hardly banking at all. The next thing you mention is this basically uh, an abandonment of the of the gold standard and uh, uh, an inception an inception, if you will, of of a fractional reserve system. Well. 
in extrapolating the natural consequences of the obfuscation of the currency of this pretended banking system, we can only understand that a fractional reserve system is an inevitable consequence of um, the coexistence of mutually exclusive purported principles of a precious metal monetary standard and a so-called banking system, which is imposing interest on um, its unwarranted authority to merely publish evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. Specifically, what I mean by that <clears throat> is your first issue when you uh, attempt to sustain a precious metal monetary standard is that what you're really trying to accomplish with such a standard is a safeguard against the eventual case of uh, devalued currency, which case of devaluation always is engendered by this lie that we call a banking system, which is simply usury. So, uh, based on a deception that banking is a real creditor, it's not a real creditor at all. It's merely publishing our promissory obligation to another in a standardized form, as if it was an issuer of credit. We are the real issuers of credit, the obligor, the person who agrees to a promissory obligation is the actual issuer of the credit. And the real creditor is not the banking system at all. The real creditor gives up property in exchange for the promissory obligation. The banking system is redundant to this whole arrangement. Um, if we insert anything into this equation, it would be uh, government to standardize the form of promissory obligations, but they would still be issued by um, by the by the debtor or, or obligor, as it would be more properly called, and uh, they're accepted again by the real creditor who uh, gives up the property which is exchanged in the in the arrangement. The problem with the uh, uh, precious metal monetary standard is that it's a relatively finite quantity. And a circulation of that quantity um, can't possibly preserve the relative value of a circulation um, which is required to sustain vacillating uh, uh, magnitudes of industry and commerce. The, the general tend tendency of industry particularly back in the day when, when uh, uh, of, 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 of gold standards was, was prolific uh, increases in, 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 in industrial production. Now, to sustain all that, you need further circulation if you are to maintain the value of the units of the circulation. The gold standard or silver standard or any precious metal monastery standard or anything even parallel to it in any way um, is actually forced to compete for the gold and all the industry and those those quantities as they are vacillating they might go up perpetually um, or they might go down and up it doesn't matter but you have because you have any vacillation in the volumes at all. Um, which results in a disparity between um, production and commerce and uh, gold, the sum of all that, and the circulation results in a dis disparity in the relative value of the circulation. So you're, you're actually violating the very principles you're purporting to uphold. The gold standard is a farce. It, it never could work. And... It is the, um, in my view, it's the greatest shortcoming of the Founding Fathers. It is their worst mistake. They didn't give us a monetary system. 
they gave us a they bound a volumetric measure to the abstract value of money in such a way which made it impossible to abide by the standard if we were to sustain intended industry. So, the lack of money which would exist itself is a need for further money which, so long as it's allowed to coexist with this purported banking system, the lie of banking, the these falsified creditors who merely publish evidence of our promissory obligations to each other and launder the principal into their possession and multiply that artificial debt, which isn't even a debt to them, into terminal debt by interest, by the fact that we can only maintain a vital circulation by perpetually reborrowing principal and interest back into circulation as ever greater sums of debt until we suffer a terminal sum of debt. The tolerance for coexistence between those two conflicting sets of purported principles is itself further destructive because then, uh, especially if you marry the two as we have in the first, second, and second, you know, national banks of the United States and practically any other bank of the world, Canada has a different arrangement. Um, uh, if you marry uh, interest, uh, uh, this falsification of, of, of credit, um, this falsification of the role of creditor, um, this laundering of principal into the possession of the falsified creditor, and this perpetual multiplication of initial artificial indebtedness into terminal artificial indebtedness, if you attempt to marry that, to a gold standard, <laughs> you have, you know, mutually ex e exclusive, um, uh, uh, falsified principles, uh, which can never uh, work together, and uh, because the purported banking system multiplies artificial indebtedness in proportion to uh, circulation or remaining capacity to service debt, then you have. Um, an accumulation of, 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 of indebtedness, which, re, which re ultimately and inevitably requires borrowing beyond um, a uh, collateralizable assets, the value of them. And so uh, uh, all these things that, you know, derivative scandals and all these kinds of falsifications of, of property uh, assets um, are actually natural consequences of the obfuscation of the currency because the system needs to borrow more and more and more beyond collateralization, beyond redeemability, and um, a purported gold standard, which can never be upheld because of the inevitable consequences of this obfuscation of the promissory obligation. So at the bottom of this, uh, it's the fundamental obfuscation of the promissory obligation, which causes all this to happen. You, you cannot but resort to uh, a, a, a fractional reserve uh, uh, if uh, the currency is subject to interest. No ifs, ands, or buts about it because you cannot maintain a vital circulation comprised at most of some remaining principal by reborrowing principal and interest as an ever greater sum of debt beyond all the value of all the assets that are related to this circulation and dedicating ever more of the circulation to servicing artificial debt at the expense of sustaining the industry, which is obligated to do so, you know, it's 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 the worst imaginable imaginable uh, recipe, and frankly, because its only powers are to take unjustifiably without justification. There is nothing in the 